Magnesium Sulfate Administration for the EDRN with Maggie, the preeclamptic mom. This is Maggie. Hi, Maggie. Maggie just found out she's pregnant with her second baby. Yay, Maggie. During a routine visit to her OB, her blood pressure is found to be high, so her doctor instructs her to monitor it multiple times every day. Eight months in, and Maggie's had a pretty uneventful pregnancy. Maggie's baby has lungs that are growing pretty well, but it will still be another four weeks for maximum alveolar and surfactant development. However, Maggie doesn't feel so hot. She's got some abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, and a slight headache. She calls her OB office and is told to go to the ED to get checked out. In triage, she has a chief complaint of abdominal pain, primarily in the right upper quadrant. She tells you she also feels like her vision is blurred. Her vital signs are a heart rate of 75, she's 100% on room air, and her blood pressure is 145 over 98. Of course, it's a busy day, so she's sent back out to the waiting room. An hour later, she's brought back to her room. The ED nurse greets her and performs a full assessment. Maggie tells him she has a headache that's getting worse and she feels like she can't get enough air. Her nurse also notes some edema to both feet and also her hands. Maggie tells him this has gotten a lot worse in the past day. She says she's drinking water but hardly urinates lately. Labs are drawn and urine is collected. The EDMD orders an ultrasound. Labs and urine results showing elevated proteinuria, low platelets, and increased LFTs. Ugh, Maggie hits the call bell. She feels like she's going to vomit and her head is killing her. Her nurse retakes her vitals and finds her BP is now 163 over 108. He knows she is now severely preeclamptic. But wait, what is preeclampsia? It's what comes before eclampsia. Duh. Okay, so what's eclampsia? Eclampsia is maternal grand mal seizures, so named because the Greeks recognized the sudden onset of convulsions in pregnant women. The theory is that the arteries of the placenta, called spiral arteries, usually dilate to 10 times the normal size, but in preeclampsia, these arteries become fibrous, blood flow is limited, the placenta cries out because it's in distress, pro-inflammatory proteins are released, and these proteins cause the endothelial cells of the mother's blood vessels to constrict. On top of that, the kidneys react to these proteins by holding onto more salt. Both of these things result in hypertension. Common symptoms of preeclampsia are proteinuria, hypertension, edema, especially to the hands and feet, decreased urine output, low platelets, headaches, blurred vision and photophobia, upper, usually right-sided abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, and dyspnea. Preeclampsia affects 3-5% to of all pregnancies. It is the leading cause of maternal and perinatal morbidity and mortality. It is a maternal and fetal emergency. The fetus suffers due to lack of circulation, and growth can be slowed or be severe enough to lead to fetal demise. Poor blood flow can lead to placental abruption. In rare cases, it can also lead to HELP syndrome, a life-threatening condition which stands for hemolysis of red blood cells, elevated liver enzymes, and low platelets. And, as discussed, preeclampsia can lead to full-blown eclampsia, which means seizures. But now, back to Maggie. The treatment for preeclampsia is delivery, but Maggie's baby is still developing, so even a few extra days of gestation are valuable if they can be obtained safely. We have some tools to extend gestation. Betamethasone to accelerate maturation of fetal lungs, indocin to inhibit contractions and delay labor, and continuous fetal heart rate monitoring. Plus, the reason we're all here, magnesium sulfate. How does it work? It provides vasodilation to both peripheral circulation and cerebral circulation. It suppresses uterine contractions, provides fetal neuroprophylaxis, which decreases the risk of cerebral palsy. It also acts as a central anticonvulsant, and importantly, unlike other anti-seizure medicines, it does not depress the gag reflex. Administration of mag sulfate can be IV or IM if there's no IV access. If giving IM, the total initial dose will be 10 grams. Divide this into two 5-gram doses. 5 grams goes into the left upper outer glute and 5 grams goes into the right upper outer glute. Then maintenance dosing is 5 grams IM Q4 hours. More commonly, you'll give the mag IV. This is typically given as a loading dose of 4 grams, followed by maintenance dosing of 1 to 2 grams per hour. 
For IV access, you'll need a dedicated line, an infusion pump, tubing, a second nurse, the med itself, high dose mag, which comes as 13 grams in 130 milliliters. Also ensure the reversal agent, calcium gluconate, is available in the Pixis. Contraindications for giving MAG are patients with significant cardiac disease, musculoskeletal disorders such as myasthenia gravis, renal disease because magnesium sulfate is excreted by the kidneys, and pulmonary edema. Close monitoring is crucial for these patients to immediately recognize signs of magnesium toxicity. Prior to the bolus, maternal vital signs, deep tendon reflexes, level of consciousness, and lung sounds are checked. At the start of the loading dose and with any titrations, maternal vital signs are checked Q15 minutes times 2. Once the patient and dose are stable, monitoring continues as hourly. Maternal vital signs, DTRs, and LOC are checked. This may later be reduced further to Q4 hours. Hopefully, the patient will be out of the ED by then. Fetal heart rate monitoring should be included if appropriate, unless an order is placed that is not required. But if you haven't checked DTR since nursing school, here's a quick refresher. In the peripartum patient, we are only checking DTRs to see if they are hyperreflexive, a sign of preeclampsia, normoreflexive, which is good, or hyporeflexive, a sign of magnesium toxicity. For this type of patient, we are not evaluating each of the cranial nerves, so we only need to check a couple DTRs. The classic way to check DTRs like a neurologist is with a reflex hammer. Don't have a reflex hammer? The bell of your stethoscope or the handle of a pair of trauma shears will do the trick in a pinch. Got a pair? All right, it's hammer time. Since the OB patient in the ED will be on a gurney, start with the upper extremities. Test the biceps and or brachioradialis. To find the biceps tendon, have the patient flex their arm like they're curling a dumbbell. The hard cord in their AC is the biceps tendon. Place your thumb over the top of this, have them relax their arm, and strike your thumb. To check the brachioradialis, support the patient's arm. Strike about 3 inches above the wrist along the radius. Lower extremities can be tougher to test with a patient lying in bed. The easiest way is to test the patellar tendon. This is located just below the kneecap. Have the patient bend their knee, support their legs so the muscles are relaxed. The hard cord beneath the patella is the tendon. Strike the tendon briskly. Scoring is on a zero to four scale. A zero means no response. Plus one is a slight or trace response. Plus two, a brisk response. Plus three, a very brisk response. And plus four is when your tap elicits a repeating reflex or clonus. A score of zero is always abnormal and indicates magnesium toxicity. A score of four is abnormal and probably means the patient isn't getting enough mag. And scores of one, two, or three can be normal. The important thing is to watch for changes. If a patient becomes more or less reflexive, immediately notify the MD. Record the DTRs in EPIC. On the right side of the narrator, under Additional Monitoring, click OB Deep Tendon and record your findings. Charting on DTRs will also be linked via an alert on the left side of the narrator when high concentration mag is ordered. Once again, back to Maggie. Remember, this is a high-risk drug, so it requires double RN verification at initiation, rate changes, and whenever hanging a new bag continuous fetal heart rate monitoring unless orders are written that it's okay without, and fluid restriction of less than 2,400 milliliters in 24 hours. Excessive magnesium sulfate can cause blurry vision, decreased respiratory rate and shortness of breath, heart palpitations or chest pain, altered LOC, decreased urine output, and absent DTRs. So these are the things we check for in reassessment. Toxicity is treated by stopping the infusion, notifying the provider, and administering calcium gluconate, which comes as 1 gram and 50 mils of D5LR. Maggie's ED nurse acted quickly and recognized her signs of preeclampsia right away. He administered magnesium sulfate and monitored her closely. She eventually got a bed upstairs and was transferred to the care of the OB team. Maggie's baby was delivered on hospital day six, which means he got an extra six days of gestation. Way to go, team. In summary, preeclampsia is an emergency for both the mom and the baby. The fetus isn't getting enough blood flow. The mom is having dangerous hypertension, which hurts the liver, kidneys, lungs, chews up platelets, and can ultimately lead to seizures. 
a diagnosis of preeclampsia is defined as a pregnant woman with greater than 20 weeks gestation that has a blood pressure greater than 140 over 90, and severe preeclampsia is when her blood pressures get above 160 over 110. To intervene and protect the mother and fetus, the patient will be given a mag sulfate bolus followed by a mag sulfate infusion. To assess and reassess for potential toxicity, close monitoring is required. Prior to the bolus, maternal vital signs, level of consciousness, DTRs, and lung sounds are checked. At the start of the loading dose and with any titrations, maternal vital signs are checked Q15 minutes times 2. Reassessments then occur hourly. The patient will then be admitted for continuous fetal maternal monitoring and receive other medications that accelerate fetal maturity and delay labor for as long as is safely possible. If you have any questions or need help with a preeclamptic patient like Maggie, talk to your friendly ED educator and or call the experts up on L&D. Discharge next!